one of the things I like to do on the Spectra Creative channel is talking about a lot of toys and concepts that are fun. And for me, one of those has always been dinosaurs. I've done a couple of videos talking about dinosaur toys and what's sort of so unique about them, especially in the minds of children and the way they're beasts that live in a way only in our imagination. And some of my absolute favorite toys have been dinosaur-based toys. And I love when they pop up in all sorts of toy lines. But something I love just as much as dinosaurs, maybe even a smidgen more, is robots. And in that manner, robot toys. There's something really cool about a mechanical person, man, woman, thing, it, I don't know. Do robots have pronouns? Who knows? We're not turning this into a political video. I mean, heck, sometimes toy companies even find ways to combine robots and dinosaurs into one almighty amazing concept. And then they make it cuddly so you can sleep with it at night. I mean, come on, how cute is Grimlock as a little plush toy? All right, I'm totally off track. The point is, robots versus dinosaurs. Dinosaurs versus robots. It's one of those sort of elemental things that is part of toy play and fantasy play. And why we don't even just get more of, you know, T-Rexes attacking robots in pop culture is beyond me. It's just coolness to a T. Now, robots in general, for the most part, most people think of them as a very modern concept. That they're actually coming into our society. There are real humanoid robots that are being created that can do things like play a musical instrument or play chess against you. And there are robots in fantasy. There are robots that, you know, we want them to be our friend or we want to hang out with them as kind of, you know, they're fun. There's enemy, robots that are our enemies that want to wipe us out from existence. And there's robots that will do our bidding and take up, uh, you know, tasks for us. Now, most people tend to think of robots as being something that emerged around the time of the Great Depression in the 1930s, that they're more or less a modern concept. And a lot of steampunkish concepts and metal men visuals really comes from that time. And we have taken that concept and brought it into the far-flung future, and Hollywood has absolutely embraced this, imagining what robots could be now and in the future, where they work with and or against humans, where there are partners in life, where we coexist with robots, or in societies where robots have conquered the human race and they run the planet. Either way, looking forward with robots has usually been the focus of movies and Hollywood and books, content. But I kind of want to go the other way and look backwards, especially because I love words. And I made a video recently about dinosaurs, specifically about the word dinosaur. And the fact that the word for dinosaur was not created until the middle of the 19th century, when Owen named officially the, these creatures, these bones we were finding. Before that, they obviously had other names, like dragons, like griffins. Obviously, people were finding these bones. And I tend to think it is exactly the same thing with robots. They may not have looked like, you know, R2-D2 and C-3PO or, you know, been made of metal with buttons and, and, and beeping and flashing and flashing and beeping, but they've been with us a lot longer than most people give us, give credit to. So let's do a little bit of history and look at how robots have popped up a lot longer than you realize at first glance. So... The first thing to look at is the name, robot. Well, we know where that came from. In the 1920s, specifically 1921, a play called Rosamavi's Universalini Roboti, which, or R-U-R, or Rosamavi's Universal Robots. Pardon me that my accent is terrible. So that, that was a play from Carl Capek, and in it, he created the word robot, which came from a Slovakian word, robota, meaning servitude or forced labor. The first idea of a mechanical humanoid that was there to serve humanity 
It's supposed to enslave humanity, like in The Matrix or Terminator. And it was actually his brother, Joseph K. Back, who came up with the word. It was just, um, he, his brother came up with it, but Carl used it in his play. But that's where the actual word robot, or robata, comes from, was this 1921 play, and it was picked up, it was anglicized, and going forward, we now had in the English language the word robot for a mechanical servant, and it was imagined very much so as humanoid, having human features, a human face, but was there to serve you. And then, of course, Isaac Asimov in the 1940s came up with the three laws that were going to govern robotics, and eventually a fourth law was added. Don't date robots! But it still begs the question, what did we call robots before the word was invented? So the first stop on our tour is mythology. And we'll look at Greek mythology first, because there are quite a few examples from Cadmus throwing the teeth into the ground that became sort of automatous warriors to creatures like Talos, who was a giant guardian made of metal that could walk and smash and, you know, do things. Even Galatea, who was a creature brought to life from stone, could be viewed as a robot. Although I think the best example is the uh, Karari Kaysarai, who I butchered that completely. These were actually mechanical servants, female servants, created by Hephaestus. There we are, Korari Kerasserai. Yeah, my Greek is terrible. The word's been also co-opted to actually mean sort of sex robot dolls, but they started off just as female robotic servants. And then in the Jewish tradition, in Jewish mythology, there is a automaton made from mud called the Golem, or Golem, not the guy from Lord of the Rings. This was a protector of the Jewish community where a rabbi would put instructions into his mouth and the mud or clay-based humanoid would have to obey mindlessly and do whatever the instructions inserted into his mouth did, kind of like inserting a program disk into a modern robot. Very, very robotic indeed, but from myth. All right, the next category to look at is history. So there are a lot of stories throughout history of people creating robotic items, and this is sort of without permanent proof, shall we say. So as an example, Dalcium, who lived from 596 to 667 CE, is said to have created mechanical robotic beings that he called automata, which is where our term for automaton comes from. And these beings were said to be able to recite prayers and even cried over the death of the Buddha. They were that devout and that obeying. Over in India, the Lakopanati, who oh, I hope I'm not butchering that, uh, is a writing that talks about beings called Bahuta Vehama Yanadas, which are referred to as spiritual machines. And they were machines that could be activated and would serve mainly as soldiers. And they would even track down thieves and inflict justice. And they were said to be controlled by wheels and gears, which absolutely sounds very much like the modern concept of a robot. But the term robot didn't exist. So these soldiers were just called spiritual beings. So what about people who actually built robotic creatures or mechanical creatures that we know historically did exist, as opposed to those, you know, just from stories. Well, one of them, and the oldest, is um, Archaeotus of Tarentum, who lived from 428 to 347 BCE, and even today he's referred to as the father of robotics, and this is because he created a device shaped like a bird, looks like a bird, smells like a bird, no, okay, it didn't smell like a bird, but it wasn't a bird. It was a mechanical creature that could actually flap its wings and fly. And even today, scientists and historians try to recreate what this device was. But there are a lot of writings about it. Then, of course, there was um, Albertus Magnus, 1200 to 1280 CE, otherwise known as St. Albertus. And he created what was called the Talking Head. And no, I don't mean the 1980s band he actually created a head that would talk. 
and would discuss time. He was known mainly also for categorizing animals and other types of uh, you know plants, but his talking head was the phenomenon that really made Europe take notice and stand up, and some people thought it was almost demonic in nature. In fact, it was smashed by uh, Thomas Aqu Aquinas, who thought it was you know possessed and wanted it destroyed. Yan Shi, who lived in China in the 10th century, created humanoid machines that were so intricate that they had organs that functioned the way human organs did, down to hearts that would pump liquid and lungs that would inflate and deflate, but all with gears and all mechanical. And there are multiple historical references that show he really did do this. Also in China was Su Song, who lived from 1020 to 1101 CE, and he's also known as one of the fathers of robotics, having created an enormous mechanical clock, almost the precursor of kind of the cuckoo clock, uh, you know, or one of the more intricate clocks that we have today, where robotic men and women would march around in circles during, you know, when it struck on the hour and they would actually move, and they would climb ladders, and they would walk around on a platform, all controlled by gears. So finally, outside of history and mythology, I also really like to look at literature. And when I'm talking about literature with robots, obviously there are so much, so much, so many, well, my, my English is much more better today, books and comics and content about robots, and it's a very modern concept. So if you're looking at literature in this category, I'm talking about the pre-1921 literature. So, you know, things like Jules Verne's The Steam House, which told the story of adventurers in India that created a steam-powered robotic elephant that pulled a house along, and it was kind of like the original version of a camper. And they went on vacation around the country being pulled by this giant mechanical elephant. Or even what's very well known is L. Frank Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz with the Tin Man. And while, yes, he originally was a man, he had every single piece of his body, including his head, replaced by metal. So does that make him a robot? Well, my favorite example from literature is from the Arabian Nights, or the Thousand and One Nights, which borders on mythology, but it is considered fine literature. And in one of the tales, called The Ebony Horse, our hero has a mechanical horse with mechanical wings. Now, sometimes the horse is drawn more as an actual living, breathing horse, but the description in the text talks about a horse with bellows, and there's actually a button, an activation button, on the back of the neck that when you press it, the horse would lift off and fly using giant mechanical wings. So it's very much described as a robot. But the bottom line is, they didn't have the word robot. Jules Verne didn't have the word robot. L. Frank Baum didn't have the word robot. All of these Chinese and, and French and English inventors didn't have the word robot. But they were still creating these mechanical, robotic, humanoid objects that could move and obey commands. So... Robots have really been with us a lot longer than we realize. Yes, they've been popularized in the you know, 20th century by science fiction, and television, and movies, and they've become a staple of sci-fi. They've even become a staple of toys, where there really are very few toy lines that don't have even a token robot character, if you will. But they're not a modern creation at all. They really do represent mankind's fantasy of almost achieving godhood and having a god complex of wanting to recreate life artificially. I mean, yes, we can all, you know, recreate life in the traditional sense of, you know, giving birth to children, but the idea of creating a servant, a mechanical servant, is a very almost godlike ability, and it definitely shines light on why humankind has been trying to do this for centuries. So it really is the same thing in different words, whether describing automatons or spiritual you know, beings, robotic beings, 
all these words that, you know, the spiritual, spiritual movement, robots have been there. And they're going to continue to be part of our culture for centuries to come. Nothing's new under the sun. We just have a new name for it, thanks to a 1921 play. I hope you enjoyed this video, and it was an interesting insight into the origins of robots and how far back they really go. If you liked it, please do give it a share and a like and uh, leave a comment below. I always comment back. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.